Tata Sika, born Rook Joseph Lorenzo, was a remarkable figure in the history of slavery in Brazil. Taken into slavery at a young age, he was forced into the labor and subjected to being a breeder, fathering over 200 children. Standing seven feet tall and weighing around 300 pounds, he was chosen for this role with the misguided belief that his physical attributes would yield strong offspring. Despite his circumstances, Pata Sika emerged as a leader and freedom fighter, aiding many slaves in escaping to safe houses. He was not only a figure of physical strength, but also of intellectual might, educating his children in their native language and culture. Tragically, Pata Sika's early life details, including memories of his family, were lost to the early age at which he was enslaved. However, he found some semblance of personal life, marrying Palmyra and having nine of his over 200 children with her. Remarkably, up to 30% of the current population of Santa Sio Carlos traced their lineage back to him. His descendants continued to search for their kin, extending his legacy far and wide. Patasika lived a true both world wars and witnessed the abolition of slave trade in Brazil in 1888. A significant event for him as a champion of slave liberation. He passed away peacefully on June the 13th of 1958 at the age of 130, having lived a life of extraordinary length and impact. Each year on June 13th, his descendants gather to honor his memory, striving to preserve his legacy and history of slavery's harsh realities. Patasika's life, a blend of suffering and resilience, stands as a testament to the human spirit's endurance against oppressive forces. His efforts contributed significantly to the reduction of slavery and remains a beacon of hope and aspiration. Slavery in Brazil began long before the first Portuguese settlement. Later, colonists were heavily dependent on indigenous labor during the initial phase of settlement to maintain the substance economy. And the natives were often captured by expedition or by their ranches, deprived from the world for flags. From the flag of Portugal, they carried in a symbolic clamoring of new lands for the country. The importance of African slaves began midway through the 16th century, but the enslavement of indigenous peoples continued well into the 17th and 18th centuries. Europeans and Chinese were also enslaved. During the Atlantic slave trade era, Brazil imported more enslaved Africans than any other country in the world. Brazil's foundation was built on the exploitation and enslavement of indigenous peoples and Africans. Out of the 12 million Africans who were forcibly brought to the New World, approximately 5.5 million were brought to Brazil. Between 1540s and the 1860s, the mass enslavement of Africans played a pivotal role in the country's economy and was responsible for the production of vast amount of wealth. The inhuman treatment and forced labor of enslaved Africans remains a significant part of Brazil's history and its ongoing struggle with systematic racism. Until the early 1850s, most enslaved Africans who arrived on Brazil's shore were forced to embark on Central African ports, especially in Luada, present-day Angola. Slave labor was the driving force behind the growth of the sugar economy in Brazil, and sugar was the primary export of the colony from 1600 to 1650. Gold and diamond deposits were discovered in Brazil in 1690, which has sparked an increase in the importation of enslaved African people to power his newly profitable mining. Transportation systems were deployed for the mining infrastructure and population boomed for migrants seeking to take part in gold and diamond mining. Demand for enslaved Africans did not wave after the decline of mining industry in the second phase of the 18th century. Cattle ranching and foodstuff production proliferated after the population growth, both of which relied heavily on slave labor. 1.7 million slaves were imported to Brazil from Africa from 1700 to 1800, and the rise of coffee in 1830s further expanded the Atlantic slave trade. Brazil was the last country in the Americas to abolish slavery. On 13th May 
of 1888. Long before Europeans came to Brazil and began colonization, indigenous groups such as the Papanasis and a host of others enslaved the captured members of other tribes. The captured lived and worked with their new communities as trophies to the tribes that martial pros. Some slaves would eventually escape but could never retain their previous statue in their own tribes because of the strong social stigma against slavery and rival tribes. During their time in the new tribe, enslaved indigents would even marry as a sign of acceptance and servitude. Those enslaved by cannibal tribes were often killed and eaten. Such a reported actions of cannibalism and inter-tribal ransom were used to justify the enslavement of Native Americans. Throughout the colonial period, the Portuguese were seen as fighting a just war when enslaving indigenous populations, supposedly rescuing them from their own cruelty. These focus on pre-colonial slavery has been criticized as it fails in the face of reality that Portuguese enslavement of Amerindians and later Africans were practiced at a much larger scale than prowl local enslavement practices. Religious leaders at the time also pushed back against this narrative. In 1650, Padre Vieira delivered a sermon in his city in which he maintained that the forced enslavement of natives was a sin, calling out his listeners for thinking that the capture of Indians was justified and giving the name of rescue to a slave so forced and violent. Enslavement of Africans In the first 250 years after the colonization of the land, roughly 70% of all immigrants to the colony were enslaved people. Indigenous slaves remained much cheaper during this time than their African counterparts, though they did suffer high death rates from European diseases. Although the average African slave lived to only be 23 years because of terrible work condition, this was still about four years longer than indigenous slaves, which contributed to the high price of African slaves. African slaves were also more desirable due to their experience of working in sugar plantations. In a particular mine in Brazil in 1540s, for example, African slaves were said to have held all the most skilled positions, including the crucial role of sugar master, even though they were vastly outnumbered by native slaves at the time. It is important to pinpoint when the first African slaves arrived in Brazil, but estimates range anywhere in 1530s. Regardless, African slavery was established at least by 1549 when the first governor of Brazil, Tommy D. Suassa, arrived with slaves sent from the king himself. Thank you so much for watching this very video on Frank Speaks, the story and time of Patasica. If you find this very video engaging, do well to like the video, drop a comment and also subscribe to this very YouTube channel. And also never forget to hit the notification bell for subsequent content coming through on this very channel. Do us this lovely favor as well by sharing this video and preaching the gospel of Frank Speaks to everyone around you. Thank you so much for watching.